Uh, we're joined today by um, Mr. Julian Russell, who is the CEO of Eclipse Group, ASX code ECX. Um, the company specializes in fleet leasing, fleet management and diversified financial services. Julian, thanks for your time. Your, your company's undergone, undergone quite a restructure over the last 18 months. Can you, can you explain that to investors? Sure, thanks, Tim. Um, so over the last, uh, since about May 2019, actually, when I joined the company, uh, we went through a, a program called Simplification. And Simplification was really targeted at returning the business back to profitable growth uh, in its core fleet leasing business. And so it was made up of four parts. Firstly, the sale of six non-core divestments, all of which were a drag on earnings. Uh, the second was de-gearing our balance sheet. So we were three times uh, geared, so three times net debt to EBITDA. Uh, we've now taken that down to just below one time, so just on par with one times. Uh, we took 15% cost out of the business as well to make it much more profitable, give us much uh, better organic capital generation. And lastly, we've reset the strategy, which we announced last week, uh, which we call Strategic Pathways. And, and what is that strategic pathway moving forward? Sure, so strategic pathways, we have three target markets, all of which are quite underpenetrated or TAM. Um, so three markets are one is our corporate operating leasing business, which is, if you think about that, like uh, ANZ, NAV, Westpac, very large corporates. We lease vehicles to them for a period of usually three years. And at the end of that lease, they give us back the keys and we give them a, a new, set of, new set of wheels again. Uh, that cycle goes around. We've been doing it for 35 years and uh, we're by far the market leader, both in Australia and New Zealand. Uh, the second part of our strategy is Novated. So we do Novated leases for the employees of those large corporates. Uh, we're under penetrated, we're about 1.6% penetrated of our TAM, which is just about 900,000 employees. Uh, we need to build that to about five to 8% uh, penetration, which is in line with where our peers are. And lastly, um, SME operating leasing is a new product we're about to launch. Uh, through digital offering, uh, through distribution partners. Uh, we're beta testing that this year. We have an exclusive partnership with Mitsubishi. And so what that means is rather than just being a major corporate um, a, a borrower, lessor of us, uh, we'll be leasing to SMEs. So anywhere from tradies up to uh, large family owned businesses. So they can have the same benefits and same costs as very large corporates have too. And, and Julian, I'm, I'm sure you've been asked this question a hundred times, but what, what's, what was the COVID experience like for Eclipse Group? Look, we're a non-bank financial, so we have a $2 billion balance sheet. Uh, so when COVID comes along, the first port of call is, how do I manage my liquidity? Uh, we're, we're an active issuer into the ABS market. In fact, we're the only issuer of fleet into the ABS uh, market in Asia. Uh, so you panic when you, uh, when you see that, but we have a playbook uh, like we had in the GFC which is preserved liquidity. So our liquidity um, at the start of COVID was about $106 million. Today, it's about $181 million. So over a six month period, uh, we created about 70% increase in our liquidity position. That allowed us to stay the course. Uh, we didn't furlough any staff. We didn't make anyone redundant. Uh, we stayed very loyal to our staff because over the long term, our staff will do that for us and be good to our customers. So we thought it would be a bit short short-sighted to let them go for a short period of time just to save money. And, and you released some uh, excellent results as part of the restructuring as well. Can you, can you talk to those a little bit? Yeah, sure. So we, we grew our MPAP by about 20% uh, year on year uh, on a like-for-like -like basis. So we feel really happy with producing growth during COVID. Uh, we've got a very sticky customer base. So many have been with us for, on average, actually in our top 20, about eight years. Uh, they're all very large numbers, but we don't have much concentration in our portfolio. So it's quite sticky and good return on capital. So uh, that's allowed us to generate good profitability. Uh, our revenue is flat, but our, given our cost out program, we, we did experience some reasonably good bottom jaw, which means that we, we could grow our EPS despite um, a flatter revenue given COVID. And, and you, you, you share risk registry is 80% institutional. What is the story for, um, what is the appeal for retail investors moving forward, given you don't have a large retail investor base? Yeah, it's a great question. And it's something we're really focused on. We'd love to build up a retail uh, register um, and certainly would appreciate retail interest. Um, historically, the group, uh, since its IPO in 2015, has been very much institutional focused. 
Um, and it, while it paid a short dividend for a couple of years, when we went into the restructuring, we had to cease that dividend. We're now going back and at the end of this year, we intend to reactivate our capital management plan, uh, which hopefully will be a bit more attractive to retail investors going forward.